Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. In my Windows Server Lab, I want to just copy and paste some PowerShell onto a Hyper-V server, have it deploy a machine. I want to be able to switch it on and log right in via RDP, already knowing the administrative password. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Yeah, you see, it works just like that. All your regional settings, end user license agreement, all that's ticked off. You'll want to watch my previous video installing Server 2019 Hyper-V. Now, Hyper-V is a hypervisor. It's not core or desktop experience Windows Server. It's just the Hyper-V bits to run virtual machines. Also, I did this remotely managed workgroup Hyper-V server in case you don't want to join your personal laptop to a domain in your lab. And in my previous video here, I just finished building this Server 2022 Hyper-V base image. It's basically going to be a static disk image and you're going to build Hyper-V differencing disks that will represent each of the unique servers that you add to the lab. Yeah, previously I did this video running sysprep with an unintend file, but that was back in 2018. I want to make sure to capture any differences between server 2016 at that time and server 2022 now. Look for the link down below to the ADK. This is the automated deployment kit. And this is the link here for server 2022. They have different versions for Windows 11, Windows 10, and the server versions. Go ahead and download it. I've mounted the ISO as a DVD drive on my computer. And then you run ADK setup. I'll accept the default path here. We want to install it. I'm not going to allow a collection of insights. I'll accept the license agreement. And we're going to untick all these tick boxes except for deployment tools. I guess leave a comment down below if you want to see what these other things do. <laughs> yeah, deployment tools gives us this Windows System Image Manager. Oh, and some DSIM PowerShell. Okay, cool. Go ahead and install that. Of course, this will take some time and we'll crop a lot of this out. Okay. Yeah, the getting started guide doesn't really tell you much. It just tells you what's new in server 2022. So we're going to go ahead and launch the Windows System Image Manager. Now I know from my previous video, we want to create a new answer file, but we really can't create a new answer file until we load a Windows image. Okay, so here you have to select Windows image or catalog file. Now I've already downloaded the evaluation ISO of server 2022, and this is the install WIM file on the server 2022 install media. I've mounted the ISO as a DVD drive on my computer. Yeah, and we want to go into the sources folder and find the install WIM file. Wow, that's four gigabytes. That must be all of the <laughs> that must be everything that installs Windows Server. Yeah, copying this is going to take a few minutes. Let's go ahead and crop that out. Yeah, it won't work off of the DVD drive itself. Uh, the Windows System Image Manager wants that w install WIM file stored on a spindle somewhere. So I'm copying it to my C temp folder. Okay, so we've copied install WIM to C temp. Now we can load that install WIM file. C temp install WIM. This takes a really long time and you want to make sure you've selected the right image. So we're selecting that. We want to create a catalog file. You must create a catalog file. So I answered yes. Of course, you have to be running uh, Windows System Image Manager. You have to be an administrator on your machine. This takes a really long time. It's processing that four gigabyte drive. So we'll crop a lot of this out. Okay, finally, you see here, we can expand out components. And that's like every control and tick box and <laughs> that you can click to set things up. And you want to add them to these passes. 
So this is my previous uh, unattend XML file for server 2016. And we want to add items to this settings pass specialize. We want to set the time zone and we want to say show Windows Live is fault. And that is in the component Windows shell setup. So we go to our Windows System Image Manager and find Windows Shell Setup. Fortunately, they're in alphabetical order. And we're going to add that to the number four pass, Specialize. Yeah, Specialize. So now we're going to use U.S. Mountain Standard Time for our time zone. There it is right there. Set the time zone. Okay. And then show Windows Live. We wanted to set that to false. Was it? Yeah, false. You can pull down and select true or false. So what's our next item to add to our unattend XML file? We want to go to Microsoft Windows Security SPP UX. And we want to set skip auto activation to true. Okay, so security SPP UX, add to the pass four specialized. You can only add it to pass four. Some of these components you can add to any one of the passes. Okay, so we want to find skip auto activation and set that to true. Yeah, not much to see here. There, we switched it from false to true. We've completed adding everything to the specialization pass. Oh no, there's one more thing here. So we need to go into this Windows SQM API component. Add that to specialize. There we go, SQM API, add to pass for specialize. And we want to set CEIP enabled to zero. I was kind of following along somebody else's example unattend for most of these, but they were not setting the administrator password. Now we're going to go to the pass 7 OOBE system and we're going to set locale information and set the administrator password. And we also want to hide the EULA page. So first we need Microsoft Windows International Core Component. And let's go ahead and add that to OOBE system. There we go. Microsoft Windows International Core. Add that to OOBE system. All right. And you see over on the far right there, input locale, system locale, UI language, and user locale. And I'm going to set them to my regional en-us setting. The UI language fallback needs to be a different region than the others. <laughs> I tried that once and it messed things up. That was in my previous video back in 2018. All right, next we want to go get Microsoft Windows Shell set up and add that to pass seven, the OOBE system. Windows Shell Setup, right click, add to pass 7 OOBE system. Okay, we got to find the OOBE node underneath here. There we go, OOBE node. We can expand that out too if we need to. There we go, hide EULA page. And we set that to true. Okay, so we got to find user accounts and expand that and find the administrator password. There's user accounts. And when we expand that, we see we can configure the administrator password. Now this is going to be a plain text value, so I'm blurring it out. You'll want to use your own password, not mine. And see up above where it says plain text true, you actually can't change that. <laughs> so it's going to show plain text here 
in the Windows System Image Manager, but when you save it as an unattended XML file, it'll get encrypted and above it will say plain text false in the unattended XML. Yeah, it won't let me change that setting. Okay, it's rather early on a Sunday morning, and I want to go ahead and save this. I don't I didn't catch that I saved it as untitled. I meant to save it as unattend. We'll catch that when I run sysprep unattend specifying the wrong file name. <laughs> okay, so this is that base 2022 disk, and I'm still running the server. The two things I did to it were enable remote desktop and stop server manager from starting at startup because when you have a bunch of machines and you're trying to start up a bunch of machines in the lab, you don't want to have to wait for server manager to open up and refresh. You open server manager if you really need it. I'm more interested in launching PowerShell when I launch a new machine. Okay, so here I am copying that XML file. Still didn't catch on that it's named untitled. Okay, I'm switching. This is PowerShell as administrator, and I'm switching it to command prompt just in case this command's only going to work <laughs> on a command prompt on a DOS prompt versus PowerShell. Every once in a while you encounter commands that don't run in PowerShell. Okay, you're going to want to change directory to Windows System 32 sysprep, and you're going to want to run sysprep OOBE generalized shutdown unattend specifying the unattend XML file path. Okay, well fortunately sysprep didn't go past this because that would have been a bummer to go through all the sysprep thing and shut down and then I'd have to start over again. It's letting me go back and rename the file. Here's where I catch on. Oh yeah, it's the wrong file name. Okay, we'll get that fixed right now. Okay, I'm going to hit the up arrow and fire up that command again. Okay, you see it's basically running all of the passes. Generalize. Okay, connection interrupted. That means it's on its way to shutting down. So I'm just going back into Hyper-V Manager and I want to see when it shuts down. There we go. You see Base 2022 is off now. So I've modified my script so it reflects Base 2022 VHDX. Yeah, here I have another brain. I have another brain fart. I I I want this to be comma separated values, and <laughs> instead I say VMs equals uh, twice, which means it's only going to build the one server, the last one that gets defined as the VMs variable. Okay, so we're on the Hyper-V server. Now this is command. I'm going to switch it to PowerShell by typing PowerShell exe. I could have used remote PowerShell. I just didn't want to try it because I'm on a new Windows 11 machine right now and I haven't worked all that Windows 11 goodness stuff yet. So here you go. I'm just copying and pasting that block of script. Boom. That machine has been created. It has a D drive that's also 100 gigs added on to the end of that. And these disks are expanding disks. They, they don't occupy that full space right out the gate. And again, the system disk of that new server is just a differencing disk. It's the difference of everything from the base 2022 disk image. We're going, oh yeah, see I'm looking for my test 01 machine and then I realize, oh yeah, I just set the variable twice instead of setting it as a, a comma separated values variable. So I'll just comment that out and let's build our other machine. I just want to make sure, I wanted the test to make sure both machines would run off of the same base disk image. All right, deploying the second machine, adding the second hard drive. Let's go ahead and switch these on. Test 01 goes on. Test 02 goes on. I'm just waiting for the IP address. Yeah, you see that down there at the bottom? 
in the network section of Hyper-V for that virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and add a remote desktop profile for test 01. I already know the admin password. Okay, yeah, we'll leave it with saved PCs because that's the one that defaults to the admin password. Launch it. Looks like we're going to get in. Hey, and there we go. It's like we already knew the administrator password. We were just logging right in. Otherwise, you'd have to go through the end user license agreement, set your locale settings. Oh, uh, what else? You have to set the administrator password right out of the gate. And you still aren't in RDP yet. And then you have to wait for server manager to come up, select local, and enable remote desktop. But we've bypassed all of that with sysprep unattend using the unattend XML file. And that's going to really speed things up when you're deploying a bunch of machines in your Hyper-V lab. And I'm going to be rebuilding all of my Hyper-V lab. Uh, my server 2019 servers have reached the end of the amount of times I can uh, re-up the evaluation period. Look for the link down below for the unattended Windows setup reference as well. I didn't discover this till I got to the very end. I want to look and see if there's other tick boxes I can tick. I like uh, that network discoverability. Leave a comment down below. Give this video a like, and before you go watch more of my Windows administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.